Bitcoin has seen a reasonable amount of FOMO recently. And in this video, I'm going to be jumping down into a bigger macro view of BTC, reviewing kind of where the price is. Is it up against resistance? Is it finding support? Um, we'll be taking a look at some of the interesting things happening in the background outside of the price chart. So as I get into it, you know what to do. Smash that like button if you find it useful and informative. If you're new, subscribe and uh, don't forget to tap the bell, selecting all the notifications to keep up to date with all the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Let's run, jump right down into this one, right? So um, this here is the monthly. I think this is actually a pretty reasonable place to start, okay? This is a, it's an interesting one that we have to kind of consider. So straight off the bat, you can see this yellow box here, right? This is $28,805 to $34,997, okay, approximately. Uh, we might as well call it 35K. Now, this is an interesting area because up here we can see that this used to be an area that had a lot of demand in it, taking the price up into the all-time high at 69K. We then see that we came down, we bounced from it, then we lost it as our demand area, or lost it as support, depending on how you want to look at it, and then we come back down. Now we're testing this area. And one of the things that's really common in charts, whether that's the Forex markets, the stock market, or the crypto market, is that previous areas of demand turn into areas of supply. And the reasoning for this is that if people People were buying, let's say, up here, okay? Previous support areas, they were looking at this area as maybe holding support. It comes down, okay? They're still holding. They haven't panic sell, sold. They believe in it. They've now kind of seen this come all the way down here. Price is finally back up where they bought it. They have a choice to be, to be made here, right? Are they going to sell their positions um, to basically break even uh, and then buy back cheaper if they think that's what's going on, or they are going to continue to hold, right? And the re main reason that you find that previous areas of demand become supply is that most of the retail investors that were trapped uh, and were able to hold they are now able to sell okay and a lot of them want to just break even and be done with it they think of these things uh illogically and they just look at them through an emotional lens so when we start seeing this thing where we have this on the monthly time frame major areas of previous support potentially coming have been coming an area of resistance now that's on the monthly time frame. It's a pretty big time frame. It's a very important time frame as well. The other thing that we have to kind of consider here is taking a look at our stochastic RSI. It was heavily oversold for months upon months upon months during this bear market. And most recently, it's come up towards and heading towards the overbought area. Okay. This is currently sat at 50.51 out of 100. Okay. So it is very, very high um, for a very small move to the upside. And that's kind of the takeaway here. Now, if we were to take a look at when we were last in an oversold position, and we were to move up to a very similar level on our price charts, then we can acknowledge that actually things have moved along quite uh, differently. Okay, so if I go ahead and measure from the lows down here to this high here, we can see that it was 171% to the body, if I refer it to the wick, it's 187%. Okay, and that takes us to approximately around the 60.8, uh, 68 level uh, on the stochastic RSI, slightly higher than where we are right now. But if we were to throw this into contrast, we can see that we've only rallied up 88%. Okay, so we know that we have very insufficient strength in the movement, lack of momentum uh, in the movement to the upside. This allows for that stochastic RSI to move from oversold to overbought um, very, very rapidly. And this is a concern because the monthly time frame is a big, meaty time frame. And anything here takes a long time to play out. So the fact that this has moved and progressed to the upside quite significantly so far, that should give us a little bit of ground for concern. We don't have to go overbought, burned, we don't have to go oversold either. But one of the things that we should consider here is there is going to be some kind of reaction when we do start to exhaust the markets. And I do think we're starting to see signs of that on these macro level timeframes. Now, other key areas that we're currently finding as support, right? So we know that our resistances are currently here, twenty-eight to thirty-five thousand dollars, and you know I'm not opposed to pushing up to thirty-five thousand dollars before we see a retracement. And you know I do think there's going to be a massive retracement that's going to trap a lot of people out. I don't think we're there yet, though. Okay, so we know that that's our kind of resistance lines. Our support lines are actually coming in down here at nineteen thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars. This is an area that we've 
been fighting with for quite some time. We found that this was support in June. We found it as support in July. We found it in support in August, but it was September and October and November that we were really struggling with this area. We can see that we lost it and then we've pushed back up. And then most recently in March 2023, we've tested this line and it has now turned back into support. Okay, now this is an interesting thing to consider because 19,798 is the 2017 all time high um, from at least according to uh, USDT pairing, right, with Bitcoin. So we know that this is a good area of support. We know that there's a, an interesting area of resistance. There's also this little minor level at $23,000 to $25,000, also an area that hasn't yet been tested as support but was acting as resistance. So on this monthly time frame, there's some very clear things that we need to consider. Consider. Now, why do I want to kind of talk about these things and kind of want to talk about how there is lack of momentum to the upside uh, and obviously the percentage differences between where we were going previously and to where we are now. And the, the main kind of thing that I really want to talk about here is that there is a lack of volume being pushed through on BTC versus where things were previously, right? So if I come back into our chart here on the monthly, we can acknowledge that the end of 2018, so December 2018, up into the June of 2019, that six month period was very bullish, right? And we can see that right in here. And during this moment to the upside, it's important that we reflect on this is where the bull market started and how much volume was being pushed through at that time and whether or not this is the start of a bull market and we have very similar kind of volume profile files, right? And when we take a look at our on-chain data, we can see that since the 1st of January 2023, 2.8776 million Bitcoins got onto the exchanges and 2.8644 million has come off the exchanges. Now, obviously, there's a little bit more going onto the exchanges than it's coming off. That's okay. It's quite neutral. And that's not too much of a problem. Um, but the volumes are interesting to me. Um, and specifically, when we take a look at how our inflows and our outflows are kind of dancing around each other, it's just basically players trading amongst each other. It's, it's OK. It's not overly problematic. And um, what we can do is we can look at, you know, who's selling and who's buying and all that kind of usual stuff. My main thing here, though, is that it's 2.8 million, right? 2.8 million is basically what we're seeing going on and coming off. Now, if we were to reflect on what happened in 2019, we can see it was 4.6 million. Okay, so we're about 1.8 million Bitcoin short in terms of volume that's actually going through um, being transferred, right? Whether that's on exchanges or off exchanges. So 1.8 million Bitcoin is a significant amount of Bitcoin. And as a result of this, you can see that there is insufficient moves to the upside, 187% versus our 88%. Okay, so we can acknowledge that volume isn't really what is driving this move to the upside. We can back that up with the data that sits on chain. So knowing that our volume profiles are low and knowing that it's not quite marrying up to what was happening previously, I do feel that it doesn't really make sense that this move is going to take us up into new all-time highs. Instead, I think there's another new lower low yet to come. Now we can take a look at this from an Elliott Wave theory point of view. And specifically, if we do start moving up into this higher range here of around $35,000, we can start to look at this thing as a three wave drop rather than what my preferred option would have been would have been a WXYXZ structure, which would have taken us down to approximately $11,000. Okay, and uh, even potentially just stopping it around 18 doesn't even have to go into a new lower low. But the higher that we push right now with the lack of momentum, the increase in our stochastic RSI on the monthly time frame, the fact that we are about 1.8 million uh, Bitcoin short for the same time period, so the 1st of January 2019 through to the uh, 6th of April 2019 for the same time period uh, of 2013 uh, to 2023, we can see and acknowledge that there's 1.8 million Bitcoin that is not being transacted upon, which it was previously. So we were very bullish back then in 2019 because there was a lot of people actually participating, uh, whereas right now we don't really see that. Now, well, obviously, this issue gets compounded uh, a lot further when we actually dive back down into our on-chain data and we start reflecting on the participants, right? We can acknowledge that retail investors, uh, you know, small money uh, is, is piling in. The FOMO is strong, right? We can acknowledge this because we can see the number of wallets that hold certain amounts of Bitcoin is on the increase. Okay, now... With this, we need to acknowledge that, you know, 0.1 Bitcoin 
has been FOMOing in like crazy, right? There's a, this message across social media, whether that's YouTube or whether that is, um, you know, Twitter, etc., that we're in a bull market. That's the message. This is also the very similar message that we got from June. Obviously, June was not uh, the bottom, and I do not believe that November is the bottom either. Okay, regardless to that, I still do not think we have the data to support the idea that we're in a bullish market. And so we're seeing all this FOMO from retail really piling in because they do truly believe in what all these influencers are saying across these various different social media platforms and uh, believe in the fact that they're in a bullish market. Whereas on the flip of that, you can see the larger institutional level investors not wanting to participate in any way near what needs to be done uh, and in no way near what was going on in 2019 either. We can see that sharks are heavily coming out of their positions, right? They're coming down very, very significantly. These guys are professional based traders, in my opinion. The way that they follow the price action or create the trends of the price action really is um, an eye opener sometimes. Now, obviously, they don't always get it right. No trader ever does. And you can see some glaring mistakes that they've made in the past. But when we're starting to see most, their most recent trades, it's been very, very good. For example, they were accumulating in early December uh, massive amounts of Bitcoin for this year and they've seen significant surges in the price action they are now taking their profits and selling their bitcoin to retail investors who are fomoing in so you can see here that there's always a balance between a buyer and a seller right this is why there's only thirteen thousand bitcoin difference between the inflows and the outflows of bitcoin on the exchanges so when we start seeing that retail investors are fomoing in and we see shark place payers like these with 100 bitcoin or more coming out of their positions it's glaringly obvious to me that there's transfers of wealth occurring and so we can't really be too bullish if these big players are not participating and i know what you're going to say look at those krakens they're accumulating right and they are they absolutely are accumulating but you've got to bear in mind that the kraken players are vastly different operators than what a retail investor is or what a shark investor is they are more aligned to whale investors and i think these two things are collaborating together myself i think there's definitely um some kind of like whale wallets that kind of aggregate together to create a whale uh, or kraken sized wallet at some point in the future and um, but if i do show you just one thing before we kind of move on to another subject which is where let me find it the 365 day view of the whale wallets right so when we just focus in on the last 90 days this little part down here it makes it look like there's actually a lot going on but when we actually zoom out it's very important that we zoom out we can see that in june that these whales were selling okay the black line are the number of wallets that hold at least a thousand bitcoin on the decrease during june okay and we can see the same thing over here in november right so they're selling at the bottom of these these swing lows right so we know that these are things that are going on we said this before in june there's a high probability that june was not the bottom mainly because it hasn't got the backing of large institutional funds and we can also argue the same thing here in november it's not got large backing of large uh, or hasn't got backing of large institutional funds in the same way they continue to sell at the bottom here in fact the wallet counts have dropped down to into new lower lows on this bear market since november okay so we can acknowledge that they've been selling into this move to the upside there's a recent move here it's just sideways action right there's they're basically just grabbing the liquidity as they see it and they're manipulating the price in my opinion now the kraken size wallet Kraken has been amazingly well or doing amazingly well at accumulating the Bitcoin um, because what they actually operate here is something slightly different. It's a totally different mindset. This is uh, basically about accumulating uh, Bitcoin to grab as much liquidity as possible later down the line. Okay, now these particular players are people like MicroStrategy. These are uh, your Elon Musks, your Teslas right now. And um, there's also... Uh, going to be pockets of um, billionaires and multimillionaires that that are not known okay and they just operate on these wallets these are not um, exchange based wallets okay so we have to understand that that's this is acting completely independent um, or at least in theory independently of the exchanges now with the kraken size wallet what happened in 2018 uh, was this they accumulated during the entire bear market flooded the markets with excess bitcoin to bring down in the actual bear market lows now i know what a lot of people kind of think about here is that why would they be buying all that bitcoin and then selling it you know at a cheaper price they're not necessarily selling this is one thing that we need to understand here everything comes down to supply and demand and one of the oldest strategies when it comes to trading is to create these kind of fake ghost 
orders in the order books right and make people think that actually there's large sell orders occurring or large buy orders that are going to occur at specific prices this traps retail into thinking that certain things are going to unfold when they do not and um, now i'm not saying that's exactly what's going on but i do look at this and i think it's not necessarily selling that's occurring here it's just being or it's just making a bitcoin available to be sold at prices which creates fear which creates this um this idea that price has to go down everything is all about supply and demand and if you see a sudden amount of supply enter into a marketplace well the price is going to drop because everybody will see that there's so much more supply you, why pay a premium price when you can get it cheaper elsewhere that kind of scenario everything in this world comes down to supply and demand so if you do not understand that i think it's something that you need to get a better grip on because it isn't about whether you have a trend line on a chart whether you have some kind of bat signal uh, some dragon pattern whatever it is essentially it all really comes down to is supply and demand if there's a significant squeeze on the supply and there is an increase in the demand price goes up and if there is a increase in the supply and the demand decreases then you're going to see price drop and that brings me back to everything that we've been talking about today we see that the demand is significantly lower about 1.8 million bitcoin lower than it was in 2019 we can see that their supply issues are just around the corner here with excess supply of bitcoin being provided not only from the sharks but i do think just around the corner from the kraken as well i think the next move to the downside on bitcoin is going to be very significant i don't think it's going to happen right away and i'm talking about a monthly time frame here could be six months down the line for all I know but I do know one thing and that is that this market is going to get completely shocked when this next move occurs for BTC now you might call it a black swan call it whatever you want um, ultimately the data here is telling me to be concerned and uh, yeah we can take some profits on the smaller time frames we can trade on the smaller time frames but we don't want to get too carried away thinking that we're in a bullish market when the data does not support that we're in a bullish market let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments down below really interested to kind of canvas what you think is going on here with btc to me it feels very unnatural yeah, but do let me know what your thoughts are if you found this useful informative smash that like button i really do appreciate that if you're new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at cheeky crypto until the next one though guys have a fantastic day we are not financial advisors. None of what we have communicated early or in writing here should be considered as financial advice. It is not. Do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate offers and understand that investing in any crypto is risky. If you do, you need to be prepared to risk your entire investment. This video is for information and entertainment purposes only. All other videos are strictly personal opinions. Please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial guidance. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit for people. Our videos are not financial advice.